Okay guys, I am in the middle of installing my Turnigy AeroDrive 1500kV motor into my Bixler. There is the stock motor there. And what I'm trying to do is actually I'm attempting to take out the motor um, without cutting anything. And it's uh, actually, um, I think I've almost got it. So what I'm going to show you right now is what, um, what I've got going on. So hang on. Okay guys, when you look inside here, you're going to see that there is um, two screws holding in uh, let me see if I can get, stabilize the camera. There's two screws that are holding in the uh, the motor. One is on this lower left side and one is on the upper right side. So the lower left one I was able to get out with this um, single uh, ended screwdriver here and using pliers to turn it to get it to initially uh, turn and then I was able to hand turn it. So the second one is up there. You can see where I've notched out the foam a little bit but I can actually see that screw in there. Let me see if I can get a slightly closer view here. Piece of foam here normally comes straight across here. So what I was able to do is notch this part out. And once you notch this part out, you can see a uh, screw head that's in there. I'm going to go ahead and try and take it off right now. And I'll see if I can remove the motor without actually cutting the whole motor pod off. Okay guys, uh, here's just another shot. Um, I've got the screwdriver into the uh, area there. I've got my screwdriver on the head of the screw. Almost there. Okay, so it actually works. So you just have to do a little, you basically have to take an X-Acto knife, go inside there and just carve out that three o'clock position there until you can see the head of the screw. And here comes the motor. Okay guys, so I tried to take this out through the motor mount and there was just no two ways about it. So I'm gonna have to cut one of these off. Uh, one of the reasons I'm replacing this motor is that it is horribly out of balance. Yeah, even without the collette or the prop on there, it's just shaking all over the place. So that's going out. And um, so let's see if this motor mount, okay, so I'm gonna have you take a quick peek here. So what I've got left here is, let me move the camera around. It's my iPhone. So what I have left here is a motor mount that I'm gonna have to scrape out of there somehow. I believe it is, um, I believe it is glued in. Uh, so basically this is a part of the CNC mount and you can see that it doesn't quite fit in there. Otherwise I would leave the other motor mount in. So I'm gonna have to take the other motor mount out. Um, that's the front of the motor mount. All right, so once this motor mount is glued in place and you wanna make sure that you glue it uh, perfectly straight, I'll probably put a little, I'll probably put a little bit of a mark here to mark the center of the of the motor mount. So once that's mounted in, basically you can mount the CNC parts motor mount either in the stock position, mid position, or a high position. And basically your motor is going to be sticking out of the center of this. Uh, okay, so, so guys, uh, this motor mount is proving to be pretty tough to get out. Basically, I've taken pliers like this and twisted the heck out of it. Like I said, I just didn't want to cut this thing in half to actually get this thing out of there. I could possibly split this down the center here. All right, guys, so one thing I've seen that I, I'm just going to try is I actually just to try pry this apart, and it actually started coming apart for me. You kind of see it opening here. Uh, what I don't do for you guys watching let me destroy my plane possibly okay guys uh, I've been prying away at this thing and it's starting to come so uh, uh, basically it's it's pretty cheap plastic and you just kind of pull it together and it's starting to pull out here so uh, okay there it is guys it is out and I'll me just show you what I did basically basically this is a uh, cylindrical object here and I didn't know this but they have some fins that are glued in there as well but Basically, once uh, the middle portions here broke off, I was able to grab it here, torque it in, and basically the whole thing collapsed on itself as it pulled itself towards the center. Okay, guys, so I'm all ready to get this um, epoxied in. I've got my uh, two-part epoxy here. I've got a dampen dish. I'm gonna have some rubber bands to basically put around the motor mount here as everything dries. So, so I'm gonna mix, uh, put some epoxy here and here, and up here around here, stick it in together. I'm gonna to make sure that there's not gonna be any glue going into these um, threads here because that's what is going to uh, hold my motor mount and I don't wanna get anything uh, in there. So I'm gonna get some gloves on, hang on just a sec. Okay guys, I've got all the parts here ready. Um, I'm gonna try to maneuver the best I can around the airplane with the camera right in front of me, right in my way. So uh, I'm gonna get mix up quite a bit of epoxy. I'm gonna get quite a bit this time, about half a dap and dish full. Okay. In the middle of uh, mixing my mix, uh, my 
iPhone ran out of phone memory, so I've deleted a bunch of photos and whatnot, and here I am again. So uh, our mix is almost, um, it's still a little bit soft. It's been about yeah, 10 minutes or so, but even even if it's five minute epoxy or whatever, I usually allow it triple the time. If you take a look at the uh, repair job here, you know, I split it down the middle and I uh, basically laid in some epoxy there. And here's the motor mount, it's nice and straight. All right guys, so what I have here is my Turnigy Aero Drive. It is called a 2636, uh, 1500, 1500 KV motor. So uh, if you take a look at it compared to the old motor, it's a little bit bigger, a little bit wider in uh, stature. So um, this motor from what I've read online uh, pulls close to like Third, above 30 amps, so that's basically why I got a, excuse me, a 40 amp uh, ESC to go with it. So, uh, what I'm going to do now is just uh, attach the prop adapter, which is right here. Uh, I've got some, I've got some um, medium Loctite here that's going to uh, Loctite this prop adapter on. I did spin up the motor beforehand to make sure that everything was smooth, and it is smooth. So I want to make sure I'm going to test it after I put the prop adapter on there because I want to make sure the prop adapter is not flawed in any way as far as uh, it being out of balance. All right guys, so it looks like you're going to need about a 1.5 millimeter driver to uh, to drive these uh, guys. So just Okay, so I've got those all snugged down and now what I'm going to do is take the motor mount and mount it to the back of the motor here and I believe uh, I'm gonna have these wires coming down. And I think I can still route these wires down through them. All right, guys. So I'm just snugging these bolts down. Screws. They're not really bolts, are they? All right. There's my motor, and it's going to be basically bolted to the outside of that um, motor mount. So let's see how that's so gonna go. This is the way you mount the uh, the motor here. Basically, it has three positions. It has a high position, which is here. And if I were to mount this in there, this basically this shaft here, either I'd have to cut it off or I'd cut it, shave a little bit of the uh, foam here. Uh, I like the mid position, which is right here, uh, and that'll allow you to run slightly larger props. And then this is the stock position, which is not a bad position either. I think I'll run it in the mid position. I'm just going to make sure I'm not going to get any uh, clearance issues between this shaft and the the inner parts here so it doesn't touch. I can see right now that it's not going to have any, any type of a problem there. Why they have the shaft here, I don't know. Maybe it's for a different type of application. But uh, So I'm just going to basically bolt this in right here and we'll get going from there. Uh, the other question is how to run these wires in a way that you can actually still plug them in. And I'm still kind of wondering about that right now. So One thing that I'm going to do now here um, that I'll do off camera is you can see that this is the stock motor wires, which are very 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 long and these are the stock motor wires that came off of the turning G so what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to desolder the um, the bullet connectors solder on some longer um, connections so I can basically run these wires all the way down this tube here and down the way it should go down into this little valley that goes into the uh, the main fuselage Okay guys, uh, if you've never uh, joined two wires together, this is just a quick thing I'm going to do for you. I'm not going to take too much time, but what you want to do is get uh, both ends together. Don't twist the ends of the wires. And basically what you're going to do uh, here is what uh, magicians call a ferro shuffle, where you force one end to the other, uh, and then you kind of roll it together in your fingers. The magicians don't do that, but that's what I do. So it's going to look a little bit like that. Uh, you can make it look a little bit cleaner than I do here, but I'm just going to do this for... Um, demonstration purposes. Uh, I like to dab just a tiny bit of flux on there just to get the flotter, solder flowing, um, get a clean tip going here. Uh, get a little bit of solder going on there and just let it join. This is going to be very, very, very strong. So just let the, let the solder just sit on there and join and run up the um, silicone as much as you can. Uh, you can see I've done the other two already, uh, so like I said, I'm not going to take a little a lot on this uh, portion, but I'm obviously going to cover that over with um, a uh, heat shrink, and um, we're going to move on. All right, fellas, what I have here is my motor with its extended 
motor leads. I like to leave them just about as long as I can because I, because I do like to position the ESC pretty much anywhere I want in the cabin. I like to keep it away from my receiver, which is right here. If I have it back here, it's going to be in the way of the receiver um, and also the uh, satellite receiver. So you can see that these motor wires are going to do a really awesome job. So there is a little snake uh, tunnel that comes through here into the cabin here. Uh, you know, if you run it any other way, it's basically going to look terrible. Uh, so basically, I'm going to run these down there. And I'm going to install my motor here uh, with some Loctite as well, and I'll show you that in just a second. So I'm going to start snaking these guys in here. Then you put the position of the camera. So you can see there's a little tunnel where those wires are going to go down into, and I have the other ends of the wires down here. So that's why you want to have a lot of motor wire there so you can plug it easily into your ESC. So um Okay, once again, uh, things are going together pretty nicely here. Uh, I do wish that these um, were not Phillips head screws. Instead, I would have liked a 2 millimeter or 2.5 millimeter uh, head screw, but uh, that's just nitpicking at this point. So. so I'm getting two of the cross screws in first, and I'm going to check to make sure that, that there is no hitting of the of the shaft that's in the inside there and there isn't any at this point so that's a good sign i'll get the other two in and i'll show you guys in a all right here you go guys this is uh, my motor mount all mounted up with my motor uh everything went together really nicely uh the screws um fit in nicely and they're very high quality screws and whatnot so um with my lower kv motor i was running an eight by six uh and with this motor combination it's a little bit faster uh, so you want to prop down a little bit so i'm going to go to an eight by four and i have a um a epc style one which is what <laughs> hobby king tell, tells me to do um so it's going to go on basically like that uh, and i've got to put the spacer in there and also the nut and the the uh, the um prop uh, spacer as well the um, this little guy to help cinch it down so I'm gonna go ahead and do that now and I'll see you guys in just a second okay guys one of the things I like to do uh, before I run my motors is to make sure that the prop shaft is not um, out of balance so I ran this motor before I installed it uh, and I, it was vibration free uh, for the most part so what I'm gonna do is just power this up and I just did it a second ago and just to show you <laughs> Lit, very um, smooth, no vibration whatsoever. So I'm going to go ahead and balance out my prop and make sure that that is fully balanced. And then I'll do some dynamic balancing of my prop, which I'm not going to go into for you guys in this video. I might do a video right, on that Just later. a quick little uh, video here just to want to show you that I have my prop balanced. Okay, so here is the um, video of the how many amps and watts it's going to pull. Let me see if we can get that better in focus here without so much glare. Okay, let's try that. So just over 25 amps, and that's pretty surprising for me. So what I'm gonna do now is just uh, pop the eight by four, excuse me, this is the eight by four inch prop right now. I'm gonna put the eight by six inch prop, or eight by six pitch prop, I should say. So I'm gonna turn everything off, and I uh, will try that. Okay, so guys, let's uh, see what the eight by six inch prop with this Turnigy AeroDrive um, monster is gonna do. Uh, so let's uh, go ahead and power it up here. That's half throttle at 12, 12 amps. So 31 uh, amps at full speed. So, um, so I'm gonna probably take both of these. Uh, I'll probably take both of these props to the field. I'll probably run um, uh, these more efficient four uh, pitch at the field, and then I'll try probably try the six and see how things go. So, anyway, guys, I hope this helped you guys out um, as far as what uh, motor to get possibly. I'm going to try out this motor. It's really nicely balanced out of the package. Um, I'll see how it runs and uh, and I'll have to renegotiate my um, CG with this added weight back here, bigger motor. So I'll probably have to put a little bit more weight in the nose, which is not a problem because when I run two batteries up front, I do have to space them back into the cab, into the cavity. So um, 
Um, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video and I'll talk to you later. Bye.